Hi everyone, and my name is Jenny, and today we are back with another q and I asked for your questions on Instagram and here on YouTube, so let's start right away with the first one. The first one says, we have heard about your Grail watches, you know, the Rainbow Daytona, uh, but what watches do you really want that are just out of reach? Well, I mean, the Daytona is also out of reach, but I guess something that I really want that's just out of reach because it's just not in my current watch budget would be an Arlange und Söhne Saxonia. I would really love that one. You know what? I've been really into Quinaults lately. I would love to have one, but that's also not really <laughs> within the budget. So just something I've been thinking of lately. Have you seen the Farah men's feel? They're really unique, but I would love to get your take on them. Far Am I saying that right? Farah or Farah? I don't know, to be honest. Let me just check out the men's feel real quick because I have not seen this one, to be honest. I know of Farah or Farah, but the men's feel? No. So let's have a look. Oh, not what I expected, but it looks good. It reminds me of the, the watch my grandpa gave me, you know, simply because of the, the cushion-shaped case, because I really like that and, and I like how it wears. But that looks quite big, doesn't it? Okay, measurements say like to like is 43.8. That's amazing. It looks great. If that's the one you're talking about too, if there's no other men's field watch, it's a stunning watch. I like the green as well. It's not the, the typical dark green that you see a lot of the times. I also like that it's not a sunburst. It doesn't look like one. Not like a stark sunburst. I like it. I like it a lot. Thanks for the question. Made me discover a new watch. Would you swap your pink oyster for a blue scratched up Nautilus? 100% absolutely not. I would never trade my candy pink, especially not for a scratched up Nautilus. I do not like the Nautilus. I know it's an iconic watch. It's just such a grandpa watch to me. And then it also looks like it wears Beats by Dre with the headphones, you know, the, the side parts of it. It's subjective. You can come for me in the comments, it's fine. But for me personally, it is a very unattractive looking watch. I don't like the horizontal striping. The blue is also not really my kind of thing. <sighs> not, not the biggest fan of the Nautilus, so I'm definitely not gonna swap this one for anything. Hi Jenny, as a new watch collector, let's say uh, in the affordable side, what do you think about wearing homages or lookalike watches during the first years of collecting until you're able to afford your grails? You know, in general, I don't really see an issue with wearing an homage watch or something that looks very similar to the watch that you plan on buying. I mean, I'm wearing a Seiko tank right now because I just wanted to try out the look because I really fancy a Katya tank, but you know, wasn't ready to, to commit that much money to it. See, when you say lookalike, my mind immediately goes to the Amazon lookalike watches, these very, cheap Amazon lookalikes that basically are just a copy. That might be a waste of money, to be honest. I mean, they're watches, it's, it's fine, but you could have saved that money and put it towards something cooler, I guess. And they're not superly well-made. Most of them are not, so you would end up wasting a lot of money. Will you make a watch tier list based on your personal preference? Do you guys want to see that? My own watch brand or watch model tier list rating them burning bridges I don't know. <laughs> oh that would be interesting i mean yeah let me know in the comments if you want to see that i'm absolutely down for this um with always making their own movements now and pretty good ones indeed do you think they will eventually phase out third party movements and go completely in-house and demand higher prices much like tudor what's your opinion on their strategy i mean if that's really their strategy i don't know if that's what they plan on doing, like if they communicated it somewhere. I think it's a smart move. Oris has a very dedicated and passionate fan base. They make some really cool watches. It would be quite a brave move, to be honest, because now they, they have their like toes in two different markets. You have the more affordable ones with the Salita movements, for example, you know, the Oris Aquis. That one still has a Salita movement, I believe. But then they've got really cool in-house movements too in the newer watches with the five-day power reserve, which is great. They were to go completely in-house. You know what? No, I think it's a good idea. I think that really strengthened the brand. Right, let's switch over to Instagram. Um, what is your personal opinion on brand ambassadors? Do they add to the brand or nah? 
Personally, I don't think a brand ambassador makes a brand more attractive. Most of the times, I don't know these people. Most of the times, it's just people from sports. <laughs> and I don't watch a lot of sports stuff, so... Mm. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Do brand ambassadors really influence you? I don't know. I don't think so. Most of the time, they pick someone lame. I mean, Breitling did pick Adam Driver, and I think he looks very handsome. But <laughs> other than that, who could I think of who would be a good brand ambassador, would make me influence uh, my decision? Can't think of anyone. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you this sweet <laughs> in real life as well? I'm a total bitch in real life. <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. If you, in brackets, Jenny, that's me, could be a watch, ooh, which watch would you be and why? Ooh, what is, ooh, that's a good question. Which watch would I be? I mean, there are two answers here, really. What would I want to be and what am I actually? <laughs> I would, I would love to be, you know what? I would love to be a very simple, classic OC Perpetual 36 <laughs> from Rolex. <laughs> You know, it's, it is basic, but it's versatile. A lot of people like it. it it's just easy to wear. It looks good. <laughs> yeah, I would love to be a 36 LP, but what watch am I actually? <laughs> That's difficult. Probably like a Casio F91W or something like that. You know, something basic as well. Just not that expensive. <laughs> but reliable, there you go. I would be a reliable watch. I'm a reliable person, so that's my final answer. <laughs> that's a good question, thank you. The most overhyped watch model or brand in your personal opinion? Hmm, Devin. Dare I say the most overhyped watch model that is so boring to me, I'm very sorry if it offends you and if you're wearing that watch right now, is a Rolex Submariner no date. Wow, that watch is boring. <laughs> it is a classic, but it's so boring. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Maybe I've been exposed to it for way too long. I've seen I, I, I see it everywhere on the street. Everyone wears it. Um, it's still a classic though, and I respect it. It's just oh, so I'm so over it. I'm so over it. Mm, what strange complication would you like in your collection? <gasps> There is one, oh God, what's it called? A retrograde second? I once, that was on a German channel, reviewed or filmed. Did I do it on this one as well? I can't remember. A Chrono Swiss, Resec, blue dial, blue everything. It's like a special edition. A Resec would be so nice. I will insert some footage of this watch here. Just fascinating to look at, but so strange. And so dare I say useless too. I would love to have Something like that in my collection, something fun. Or maybe the flying hours from Moza. That would be also quite nice. Those two would be great. Uh, you put on a watch, wind it, and a chrono genie appears. Three watch wishes, no rules. Ooh. So wish number one, I could shrink down or resize any watch by the snap of a finger, and it would still look great proportion-wise. That would be my first wish. Second wish would be no more scratches. <laughs> so make my watches indestructible, no matter the material. So I could wear like a solid gold watch and have it look brand new every time, forever. That's the second one. Third wish, yes, magically, um, like magically adjusting bracelets. So I will no longer have the tight feeling with any steel bracelet whatsoever or strap. So it will always fit perfectly and adjust magically to my wrist. I think those are good three wishes. Let me know your three wishes in the comments down below. What do you think? Oh my gosh. I've got that question so many times on, on Instagram and here on YouTube. What do you think of the 60th anniversary Bond watches? So they have mainly two. Um, you have a new Bond Seamaster, you know, the steel one, I think it's just steel, uh, with a revamped case and, and dial. And then there's also a white gold version. I believe Omega has a special name for the white gold. 
can't remember it right now. What did he call it? Oh, Canopus Gold. <laughs> so funny little anecdote. Kai and I were sitting on the sofa, scrolling on our phones, shame on us, whatever. And I loudly said, oh my God. And he turned to me and he was like, did you just see the new Omega? I was like, yes. He knew immediately what I was uh, reacting to. Listen, being a big fan of Rainbow Daytona, I cannot say that the bezel is, is weird. I like a colorful bezel. I like sapphires on a bezel. I think it's nice if you've got a cool color gradient. I, I just feel like this watch is so, it mixes so many things. Let's dissect it. Okay, so. It's the 60th anniversary James Bond watch. And as far as I know, it is meant to um, pay homage to Ian Fleming's Jamaican house or retreat in which he wrote the James Bond novels. So you've got the green and yellow representing Jamaica, I believe. And yeah, <laughs> what can I say? It does tie into the James Bond lore and everything, but oh, it kind of feels like a stretch. I don't know. <laughs> I maybe would have think different about this if it wasn't a James Bond edition. It feels very much like a limited edition for the sake of a limited edition. And then the, the dial, at first I thought this was a camouflage type of pattern. You know, like a dark gray, black, white camo <laughs> type of dial. I was like, what the hell? Why would you do that? But I think it is actually meant to be, wait a second, let me just see if I can find it on the website. Oh, here, it says it has a dial made from natural gray silicon. A nod to the sands of the 007's Caribbean hideaway. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. Feels like a stretch. It is a very out there looking watch. I wouldn't wear it, to be honest. The other one, wait, there's a second one. It's quite boring compared to this one. It looks fine. I don't mind the lollipop seconds hands. The case bag is interesting with the intro graphic, with a, what is it, like a gun barrel? You know what I mean. The box is cool too. I like Omega boxes. I think they make much prettier boxes than the Rolexes, for example. Will luxury clones destroy luxury watch markets? Some clones are perfect inside also. I don't think so. There's always going to be a consumer group that is turning to clones, but I strongly believe they will never be the majority. And I also don't think they will destroy the luxury watch market because there are way too many people who really want the real deal. And I don't think this is going to change. With all the hype is gone, uh, what's your take on the Moon's watch? To be honest, I still think it's an interesting project. Not the biggest fan of how they handled the entire communication of, on how it is going to be available. You know, the online shop and the back and forth and availability with that. I think it would still be really cool if my brother and I would have that watch as like a, you know, team watch. I mean, back then when it was still a very hot piece. <laughs> I would have loved to get one for my brother and I, but now I'm, I'm kind of over it. Now that it's not really possible for me, conveniently to get one. I can't be bothered, so yeah. It's cool, it was interesting for a time. I think they could have handled it better, but I'm sure they did learn quite a lot with that release. And I'm excited to see what else are they going to come up with. Chrono24 or Chronix, love your content. Thank you so much. That's a bit of a difficult comparison because Chrono24 is a marketplace with lots of lots of different watch dealers offering their uh, watches and Chronix is a watch dealer, so it's like apples. What do you say, apples and pears? You can't really, apples and oranges, sorry. <laughs> can't really compare these two, it's very different. Depends on what you want. If you wanna compare prices, Chrono 24. If you wanna buy a watch from a very notable and popular watch dealer, Chronix. Uh, not about watches, but curious if you have a favorite perfume. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do actually have a favorite perfume right now. It's Mojave Ghost from Byredo. We like it. And that was it for today. Thank you so much for sending in all of your questions on Instagram and here on YouTube. 
Really sorry if I did not answer your question. Uh, maybe if I haven't answered it, make sure to check out my other Q and A's where I, for example, talk about my tattoos, my favorite watch brand. Yeah, I will link some of my favorite Q and A's in my description box down below for you. As always, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have enjoyed this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more watch related content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified whenever I post a new video like this one. And yeah, then I will see you in my next video. Bye.